The great spinning mother lays down her fat reserves. Her burbling tummy rumbles and burps. Her waters gurgle and surge, swishing back and forth, sloshing the rich luxuriance of her pregnant pullulation. Endlessly she re-erupts, readjusting her crusts, renewing her plate-grinding tectonic bones, as all across her gorgeous, curvaceous body her tiny cleaners swarm. They lick, spit, suck, limp, swish, slope, swerve and splurge, and she sustains them as they sustain her, amidst her complex, toothsome, bulging, multi-storied space forever laying down and dying, layer upon countless layer, rotting and revolving round and round. She squeezes them harder and harder between her vast plates as she lays down her fat reserves, the battery for species yet to come. And in these great subterranean seas of ooze, carbon atoms wait in humming droves for their next time to come around. And now the carbon weevils are at work, burrowing in and lancing the fat reserves, excavating, tunneling, rearranging, reordering, re-releasing the carbon atoms syringing them out of her vast and toothsome pie crust, evolving ever more elaborate mouse parts, mandibles and proboscis extensions. And so we carbon weevils sing, burrow down, bring it up, burn it up and bring it on. Burrow down, bring it up, burn it up and bring it on. Now let's zoom in and observe our evolution. At the 2007 shooting of the next frame, there were precisely 6,713,008,180 carbon weevils alive on Earth. Eleven years later, that's now 7,641,257,100 precisely. If every single carbon weevil was herded together, then rolled up into a single squidgy ball, we would only be this big next to the Earth. Our collective sperm would fit into a matchbox and our eggs into an egg cup. Fade to black, fade up. Let us now observe our life cycle. The carbon weevil starts out as two distinct microbial life forms, a sperm and an egg. We rapidly grow into an adult carbon weevil in appearance much like a forked worm. We are capable of achieving great sizes before quite suddenly shriveling up and dying, releasing our 18% carbon in seconds, as opposed to the slow release techniques favoured by other species. Carbon weevils mostly live in packs, in vast spreading nest sites covering huge areas of the earth, stacking ourselves on top of one another in great piles, row upon row, line upon line. We construct these cocoons from rocks and minerals, which we nibble up from the earth's crust and glue together with special goons. Weevils lay down intricate gum trails made of hot melted carbon which dries, often creating the most beautiful patterns when viewed from above, crisscrossing, underpassing, bringing and bypassing. Down these hardened gum trails we weevils swarm. Much like crabs or snails, we've evolved shells in which we traject ourselves at fantastic speeds, often just around the corner. We're happiest of all when linked together in long, bottom-sniffing chains, often moving only an inch in an entire hour. These highly developed carbon rituals are regarded by many as the pinnacle of carbon weevil social interface. We have evolved to traject ourselves in herds into the air, inside tubes which travel at huge speeds across huge distances, so we can lie in rows roasting ourselves or conglomerate in massive pan-global hot air sessions before catapulting ourselves home a few days later. Much like our close cousin the green fly, carbon weevils drop 250 young a minute, so our population is increasing precisely this fast. Consuming as we do 3 million tons of food a day, gigantic swathes of the world are cleared and covered in fantastic self-repeating patterns.
ponds where fiendishly engineered species are laid out and forced to grow at the most amazing speeds. Other inhabitants of the world are packed and fattened in enormous receptacles to be chopped and minced into pulps and pastes, mashes and mushes, packaged in polymer parcels and purses on which we weevils blissfully graze, creating colourful new continents and our own sedimentary era besides. And so it seems the carbon weevil serves the unique evolutionary role of releasing the Earth's carbon deposits, redesigning the pie crust, and creating our own multi-layered weevil sphere. Though sightings of evolving subspecies suggest changes are afoot. We are only at the beginnings of understanding our remarkable and inexhaustible species, and our unstoppable inventiveness never ceases to astound us. Suffice to say that such is the vast time scale of evolution that we'll certainly never know what happened next. Before we too became swallowed, like so many before us, into those vast, self-regulating memory banks of the great spinning mother. <laughs>